Hello, my name's Brooke, and the video you're about to watch is uh, called Mr. McGlump, and it's a musical that I wrote for my nieces, and that was put on at the Bristol Old Vic last year. It's a story about the community, and being brave, and helping people in need, um, which is why I thought I'd put it out at this time, and also because theatres are shut well, everywhere, and uh, like the National Theatre have been putting up their videos, I thought I'd put my little bit that I have up online too. Uh, it's free to watch, obviously, wherever you found it, on YouTube or wherever it ends up, but um, if you'd like to make a donation, I'll put a, a PayPal link in the description and the details, and 50% of that of the donation will go towards um, the Bristol Children's Hospital, um, the, the charity called The Grand Appeal for their coronavirus emergency appeal. So, but that's, there's no obligation. You can watch it. And if you want to share it with your friends or people that you think will like it, then do. Um, my editing skills are not amazing and the sound isn't incredible, but I've done my best. Um, so yes, a big thank you to everyone that's working so hard at this time with everything that's going on. And I hope that whoever's watching this, I hope you're okay. And I hope everyone is being looked after and looking after each other. Um, I will have another show coming out, which I'll put online soon, called My Great Giraffe, about a big giraffe that arrives in a garden. <laughs> if you'd like to find out more of what I do and my music and my writing and artwork and stuff, you can find it at brooktate.com. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy Mr. McGlump. Exactly holding together, and the nine on his front door had slipped upside down. Ooh. 
that it looked like a six. But everyone knew it was a number nine, not just because it was between eight and ten, but because everyone it, knew the family who lived at number six very well. The Robin family lived at number six. And there wasn't a more likeable family around. I'm Mrs. Robin. I'm her husband. This is Timmy. And I'm part of that's our little Robin family. children would play on the street, come rain or shine, and the neighbours would smile to themselves whenever they did. All except Mr. McGlump. He would huff and puff through his bushy moustache and roll his eyes. He'd barely draw the curtains to let the sunlight in. He'd even drink cold tea without thinking, oh, I wish I'd drunk this earlier. <laughs> Miserable. And as much as the Robins were very much liked by the neighbours, Mr. McGlump was very much not. That's how we all tried to ignore. Have you ever seen a house so grim? No one knows what hides behind the front door. But it's rotten through and through. There's no club like him. But he doesn't seem to bother us though. Keep himself to himself so you know we're fine. Yeah, we are, we're fine. That's the house we all tried to ignore. All it needs is just a lick of hand. <laughs> I would say it needs a jolly lot more. We do it if we have the time. But I hate. Doesn't really seem to bother him though. Keep himself to himself so you know he's fine. Here we are, we're fine. So, Mr. McGlump remained a misery and a mystery. And the rumours about him grew like a jungle of weeds around his house. But there was someone else on Chipson Street who wasn't very miserable at all. I'm Melvin Trackett. It's my duty to protect this town. The powers that be have chosen me to turn this town around. And so I firmly took the lead and gave this town just what it needs. Safety in this troubled time. More than one would say that I'm responsible of what I've done. They stand together, sing as one. Two, three, four, three. In other words, we know the song. As long as the neighbors kept in line, we sang in song. Not grump. Bob, yeah. did Mr. McGlump ever eat a dog? Well, I'm sorry, 
pushed down. <laughs> Rudy said he did. Rudy? Or oh, maybe we can invite him round and see if he'd like to eat you then, Rudy. Oh, please. <laughs> can we, Mum? Can we what? Invite him round for dinner? I don't think so. I don't think he'd want to come, Timmy. Oh, but, but, but Mum, you, you always tell us it's, it's, it's good to be good, it's kind to be kind, it's nice to be nice, and... Every... That's what should always be done. Yes. Susan. Well, says Mum. We'd like to write an intention for Mr McGlump. Here you are. Mr. McGrum, come into our house. Yes, Rudy, to our house. Now, are you sure this is a good idea? We don't even know it. Let's write it. That's brilliant. Right, so we can read it. Uh, but let me, Timmy, because I've got really good handwriting. Oh, <laughs> please, stop picking your brains out. <laughs> Dear. Timmy, not E, -E that's dear, like the animal. Oh. D E A R. Mr. McGlump, would you like to come for tea? Yeah. No, Timmy. What? Because he might just think that's tea. Yeah, that's true. So, would you like to come for dinner? No, that's better, Timmy. Right, what could we just say? What could we have? What do monsters like to eat? Ruby. What? He's the monster on our screen. Ruby. So, what do monsters like to eat? For the mash when it's put on the table. Oh, I use a knife and fork or just a fork? If he's able. When he talk with his mouth full. Or quietly too. A couple of pat and then Timmy then you. Oh, yeah. It's good to be good, it's time to be kind. It's good nice to be nice and leave no one behind. Oh, yeah. To come for. He will have us all for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's got a dog? More like a lion! Look at that! Oh, don't do oh. it to me! It's alright. If you never come back, can I have your bike? Don't do it! Oh! <laughs> 
Uh, Mrs. Snib's front garden. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. 
<coughs> bravery towards the dark, bravery towards the spiders, the bravery grown ups have when they go and see it went bump in the night. But the most wonderful bravery is the, the bravery to do something no one else has done, and that is just what you did. Me? Of course, dear Tim. No one has knocked on Mr. McLump's door in a jolly long time. At all? Well, I suppose the postman, the parcel doesn't fit through the letterbox, but I doubt Mr. McLump is very much into this online shopping malarkey, so he probably doesn't knock very much either. Does he not have any Wi-Fi? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I do know that you've learnt most of these lessons already. Lessons? Should I sing them again? Forgive and forget and let go of the bad. Try when we can, see good, not the bad. You stood in the brave and it's something that I didn't do. Do you like him? <laughs> do I like him? Oh, I'm quite sure. Oh, I'm quite sure. Of
didn't have a clue what I should do with it when it was in my hand. But I drew a breath and in I blew, and I didn't understand where the note was coming from, whether it was right or wrong. I don't know where it's coming from. I hear a note and then I go along with it. Just a quiet little melody. Just a simple song inside of me. Got a trumpet to play and I don't know how to say it, but I hope one day my music plays. For years I just kept my music to myself. Too shy to let anyone hear. It's a little bit absurd. What do you mean? Well, Marty doesn't read a single note. He just hears it in his head. What do you mean in his head? To be honest, I don't really know. Why don't you go ask him instead? Where do you hear your melodies? Marty, what do you tell us, please? Well, I'm presenting you with this here trophy for the music that you write. <laughs> Trumpet from his hand. No, 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 no,
If it's truly your music, then sing it yourself. Give me back my trumpet! But why, Martin? Surely she doesn't need your help if the music was her own. It was my music, it was! Oh? They, they came out of me like a magic even choice! Oh, well, come on then, let's hear it! <laughs> uh, you were full of it a moment ago. Anything? Oh, Not a single note, Miss Trelawney. It sounds like sorcery to me. Listen, you can do it. I know you can. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm I'm trying. 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 I'm trying
Again, it's him that is wrong. You're not a danger to us, here you belong. And here it is, oh won't you stay? You are a part of us as much as we are you. Just stay for dinner. Just stay for dinner. Taught us to hear the songs inside of us, and now we'll know. We must go on to them for now, if you go. We must go back to what you say. You are a part of us as much as we are you. Just stay. I think I 
a flower at this time of year. Mind you! Mr. Lovely, they're fake. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Oh, please don't make me No, I'm really sorry, I can't. Courage to stand 
and be liked and be loved and be
of Chipson Street once and for all. It is time for you to leave. Leave, Marty.
first time he came for tea I couldn't help but see a man who was scary He was grumpy and hairy and huge like a walrus But oh, how he fooled us Was that meant to rhyme with walrus, Pippa? Oh, that was Rudy. rubbish Mom, you can you tell him? First time he came around I felt the blame when I found a man who was broken But now that we've opened our hearts He's a friend, a man on the mend A dinner table and an extra chair for one more bum <laughs> Mum, you told me not to say bum at the dinner table Bum <laughs> Remove the label <laughs> And you can laughing. find yourself a chum it's all right to break a rule now and then, Rudy. Bum. First time I went for supper, I made myself a cup of tea to calm down. I was pacing around, I was nervous, I guess. But I told myself, yes, you should go. It's, it's all been silly, really. All of these years I knew. Away. I've wasted each day, but I found in this family. I'm proud when I stand and be me. A dinner table, an extra chair for one more bum. <laughs> Come on, Rudy. Bum. Remove the label, and you can find yourself a chum. Dinner table, an extra chair for one more bum. Bum, remove the label, and you can find yourself a chum. A dinner table, an extra chair for one more bum. Come on, everyone. Do you like Chips and Street now, Mr. McGlump? Timmy, I'm quite sure I do.